going to uh, squeeze in a solo probably before I preach.
when the furnace went down, I was so out of sorts, I forgot to pray. <laughs> I kid you not, and I'm not making light of it, but we had a technician that was coming this past Wednesday before Bible study. All of my Bible study compatriots, we prayed. We just asked God to put his hand upon this gentleman, and uh, he knew what he was doing. He had experience in boilers, and uh, you can tell by the results this morning, we got heat. So praise the Lord for that. We're just going to address a few of the things that uh, we saw issues with, so we're hoping for a good resolution on that. It's nice to be warm. So thank you for being here today. For those watching online today, welcome to you. God bless you. But always remember, it's always good to pray. And don't forget, that should be our first line of defense, not the last. Hail Mary defense. Always good to pray. Well, this lovely lady is our worship leader today. And take it away. Welcome to our service. Do we have any first time guests, either in person or online? So we're all family today. We would love to honor if you were first time guests, so if you are online, please go ahead and click the first time. Okay. Our next church work day is Saturday, February 3rd at 8.30 a.m. Mark, did you, did you write that down, David? Do it right now. All help is welcome. Let's keep in him and check him. The next breakfast and blessing is slated for February 10th from 8.30 to 10 a.m. See Carol if you're interested in helping with this ministry. Today's flowers are given by Jim Hag in memory of our wonderful Joanne. This week's calling club names are Dave Williams. Dave. We're shouting out to Dave right here. Good <laughs> day after that. Dan Minch and Maureen Fronick. If you would like to be added to the list, please let Shara know. If you need a phone number, please call Shara in the church office. Our revelation study is on Wednesday, January 31st at 1 p.m. in our church library. All are welcome to attend. Pastor Wendell is still has study materials available in the church library for anyone who is interested. Let's begin to prepare our hearts for the Lenten journey this year. Our Ash Wednesday service will be February 14th, Valentine's Day. That's right. At 7 p.m. This is only th two and a half weeks away. Plan to join our journey to the cross with Jesus. Looking ahead, Easter Sunday is March 31st. Everything is early this year, so we're we really got to going from Advent almost into <laughs> Easter mode. But we will, we will do it right. Uh, come join us on this journey to the cross with Jesus. Our Women's Guild will host their annual soup and salad event in three weeks on Sunday, February 18th, after the morning service. Sign-up sheet is on the sign bulletin board. Speak with Jan Jansen about your questions. Okay, so if everybody could uh, stand, we're going to do the call to worship. <laughs> Arise, shine, for the glory of God has risen upon you. Nations are come to your life, and kings the brightness of your rising. Wise men came from the east, saying, Where is he who is born king of the Jews? Lord, we see his star in the east, and come to worship him. The, the wonderful light of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Now, I'll our first song, 456, Onward Christian Soldiers. Let's see, 456. Okay. Let's do the first and the last, Onward Christian Soldiers. Let's see how many marches we have today.
like you have been waiting for us this year. Darkness has been banished. God's light of hope floods the earth. God's light comes to us all. Lord, make us ready to journey to this light. Prepare our hearts to receive this light. Amen. Now it's time for passing the peace. Okay. You know what I mean. As long as my wife knows the name. As long as my wife knows the name. I was worried your truck here. Well, it's still bad. I'm glad you're here. Sarah, Rice, Vivian, and Kate. 
Catherine, now you have to, you should do that in one breath. Yeah. One breath. All right, go ahead, Laura. We'll give it our best shot.
Thank you. Um, so the message of the scripture tonight today is from Colossians 1, 10 through 20. That you walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might, according to his glorious power of all patience and long suffering with joy giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of his love, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. Amen. He is the image of the invisible God the firstborn over all creation. For by him, all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things and in him, all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that is all things, he may have the pre preeminence. Reconciled in Christ, for it's pleased the Father that in him all the fullness should dwell, and by him to reconcile all things to himself by him, whether things on earth or things in heaven, having made peace through the blood of his cross. Amen. That's it. Thank you, Debbie. Thank you, thank you, thank you. A wonderful one. Amen. Now you'd think she'd been doing this for years, wouldn't you? <laughs> Amen. Debbie, thank you so much. We appreciate each, each one of you that have a part in the service as worship leader. Uh, we've got a regular rotation that goes on. If uh, it's something you feel you'd like to do, just speak up. Let me know. Let Char know. And we'll uh, be happy to include you. In that rotation. All right. Amen. Amen. Like I said, it is good to be in God's house. Thank you. Good to see these smiling faces. Good to see uh, many online. And we're just grateful that the weather is kind of broken. Uh, I don't know who is happier me, my wife, or my dog. And uh, <laughs> when it warmed up, it was, uh, it was uh, I probably could have made some money on one of those uh, America's Funniest Home Videos uh, submissions. Watching Kathy trying to get those boots on that dog. I mean, it was, it was like a Western rodeo thing, you know, where she's got hog tied to the dog and trying to get those boots on. She did not like uh, those boots on, but once she got them on, she was fine. But the boots have been needed in these last few days as it started to warm up, and we praise God for that. Amen. Now, this message series for this month is we've, uh, we're concluding this month with we carrying it over into February as well, uh, things people say. And we've talked a little bit, you know, about, uh, well, last week was, the focus was on things people say about the unborn. And uh, before that, it's things people say about God. And things people say about Christianity in general. So today, the focus is going to be on Jesus. And if you'll permit me this, it's kind of interesting as I was thinking about it that a lot of times if you'll say to, say to folks, uh, you know, do you believe in God? And that, that's a specific question. And folks will have a very uh, varied or different opinion on it sometimes. Some, well, I don't believe in God. I don't believe in a higher power. I don't believe in this, that, and the other. But if you turn that just a little bit with our subject for today, if you say, do you believe in Jesus? Most people, I'm saying there are exceptions, but most people or most religions in the world today have a place for Jesus within them. Most religions have a place for Jesus within them because some of these religions, notice I'm putting the emphasis on religions, right? Some of these religions, whether it's if you say, ask if God exists, it's a whole different question and if Jesus exists. Most people accept that he did. 
But most of these religions will say that he was truly a man who lived in Israel about 2,000 years ago. The debate begins with Jesus when you start to talk about his full identity. Because almost every major religion will teach that Jesus was either one of several things. Either he was a good prophet, he was a good teacher, or he was just a good man. They'll teach one of those things, the religions of the world today, that Jesus falls into one of those three categories. A prophet, a good teacher, or just a good godly man. Someone that tried to do right. But the Bible tells us today that Jesus was infinitely more than just a prophet, a good teacher, or even a godly man. I remember some years ago, my dad preaching a message about Jesus. He said that Jesus was one of three things. He was either a liar, he was a lunatic, or he was Lord. He's one of those three things. And the message that he preached, and it wasn't blasphemous or in any way like that, but there's a truth in the title of his message for that day. And there's a truth because God's word tells us if Jesus isn't who he claimed to be based upon his word, then he's one of those three things. We know what the Bible says about saying God, can God lie? Can't do it. Can't do it. He's always truthful. So who did Jesus claim to be? Our scripture reading for last week was in John chapter 10 and verse 30. Where Jesus said, he was talking to a, Jew, a group of Jewish leaders there, scribes, Pharisees, Sadducees. He was talking to those leaders, and he says there in John 10, 3, he says, I and the Father are one. Now, this is one of the verses that I use. I'm talking to people about demonstrating that God the Father and God the Son are the same. That there's a trinity. And you said to explain the equality and the power that Almighty God is that Jesus is God. Can I understand three being one? No, my finite mind cannot. But I accept by faith what the scripture tells me. That there are three offices, that there are three roles that God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit speak to those roles. And each one of them plays a role your life if you know Christ as your Savior and in my life as I know him as my Savior. The relationship that we have with Jesus is special. And as he was talking with those religious leaders there in John chapter 10, I remember once upon a time I was occasionally, I, would, I would still do, go to ministers meetings and stuff like that. And I got into a discussion with a fellow pastor who was trying to make the case from this particular passage of Scripture in John 10 that Jesus was not equating himself to be God by saying that I and the Father are one. So me being the pain in that that I usually am when it comes to spiritual things, ask him, why would you say that? Well, I think that's usually a turn off for me <laughs> immediately when someone says, well, I think. Uh, but what he thought was, he says, well, he's not saying that he's equal to God. He was saying that he and God are on the same page when it comes to dealing with humanity. I says, well, let me think about that for a second. No, that's not right. That's not right. He says, I and the Father are one. And you know how I know what he was saying? Well, he's not claiming to be a deity. Yes, he was. Because in the subsequent verses of that chapter, as he was talking to these Jewish leaders, and he made that statement about <coughs> I and the Father are one, you know what those Jewish leaders did? They reached down on the ground and picked up something. They picked up a rock. Or a stone. For what purpose did they pick those rocks up? What were they going to do to Jesus? They were going to stone him. 
Why were they going to stone him? Because the words that were coming out of his mouth, in their estimation, these are the men that he was talking to, he was blaspheming their holy scriptures by claiming to be equal with God. So his direct audience knew what he meant. His direct audience knew that he was claiming not to be on the same page with God, but equal with God. In power, in authority, in might, in every way. That's what he was claiming to be. So I introduced that aspect to the gentleman I was talking with. His response was, well, I've never really thought of it that way. I said, well, maybe you need to read it again. Maybe you need to read it again. And I'm not claiming to be the smartest guy in the block or anything like that. But God's word speaks for itself. And he read it again and he came back and he says, you know, he says, I see what you're saying. He says, and I believe that you're right. It's not a matter of being right and wrong. It's, it's interpreting God's word the way God, God wants his word to be interpreted. In truth. Meeting each one of us at the point of our needs. And Jesus wanted those men to know that he was God in the flesh. You go back to John chapter 1. Those first few verses there of John chapter 1. Let me flip over there. I'm just going to read a couple of those to you. When he says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God and the Word was God. The Word became flesh. In verse 14, it says, And the Word was made flesh, and He dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, and the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. The Word begotten means that Jesus was revealing the spirit and the truth of God the Father to all those that could see him. He was revealing the presence of God to everyone that witnessed him and would come in contact with him. That's who he was. Who he is. I tell you, we've been having some great discussions. Uh, the group of ladies that have uh, been part of the Revelation Bible study. Man, I just get some uh, I, get, I get chills in the back of my neck thinking about some of the discussions we've had and some of the, uh, the insights that this amazing group of gals have come up with in our weekly class. Such a precious, precious study time. But it, what is Revelation all about? God is revealing Jesus to the world as the only hope, as the only Savior one last time. And we've gone back and forth and we've studied in depth how he reveals himself. And, and Jesus, even during this great time of tribulation, beckons and calls people and says, come to me. Come to me if, if you're weary and you're heavy laden, and I will give you rest. God's hope and God's promise still applies, even during that horrible, awful time of tribulation. What a blessing it's been to be, to be studying that. We're still Three quarters of the way through it. We're enjoying God's word every step of the way. John 8, 58, Jesus claims to be the pre-existent God. The one that was alive and well before the foundations of the world. This world, this earth, we're laying. He says in John 8, 58, Verily, verily, I, I say unto you, Jesus answered, he says, Before Abraham was, before Abraham was born, mind you, I am. I am. This is a direct reference tying him to the Old Testament as God the Father was speaking to Moses back in Exodus. Those first few chapters, when, when Moses said to him, well, Lord, who, who should I tell Pharaoh that is sending me? God tells him, say, I am that I am is sending you. That's his name, I Am. And Jesus ties himself to the great I Am, the one that's pre-existent. Not just a man, not just a good prophet, not just a good teacher, but the eternal pre-existent God. That's who he claims to be. The Jews at that same point 
in John chapter 8. They rejected his identity. And once again, they bend down to pick up stones to stone him for blasphemy. They knew who he was claiming to be. Why can't the world see it today? The world wants to see Jesus as simple, uneducated, a carpenter, a friend to fishermen. They want to see him as everything else. Maybe a good man, maybe a prophet, maybe a good teacher. But they want to see him as everything else but Lord. Because unless when he becomes Lord, we are responsible to him. We're responsible to him take action. We're accountable to him. As the Apostle Paul wrote in Philippians chapter 2 and verse 10, that one day every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. We had a good discussion during Bible study this past week too about, uh, about death. We've had this, as I mentioned, we've had this streak, we've had a number of people die month in a row, and I am, as I said, I'm very glad that that has come to an end. But you know, that's the point we all have. At each one of these funerals, I, I made that case that the deceased has kept an appointment that each one of us have. We all have to prepare to die. It's going to happen unless we are raptured up, according to 1 Thessalonians, Chapter 4, verse 17, or 1 Corinthians 15, 51, unless we are raptured, translated out of here, we will die. Someone will speak at my funeral. Someone will speak at yours. It's an appointment that we have. It's once appointed unto every one of us. Death, because of sin. After that, the judgment. We're going to meet Jesus. Man, just the thought of that excites me, meeting Jesus, putting my arms around him, him putting his arms around me, and hearing those words, well done, my good and faithful servant. And trust me, that's not tuning my horn at all, because I have failed him miserably time and time again. But I'm saved by his blood. Through his blood, and because of his blood, because of who he is, I've got a hope and a promise that where he is, there I will also be. My hope is in him. My hope is in, in the Jesus who is my Lord and Savior, not the Jesus who was a good prophet or a great teacher, or a great godly man. My hope is in, in the King of kings, the Lord of lords, and the Savior of all humanity. Oh, who people say Jesus is, make him your Lord today. Make him the one that is worthy of your worship, your love, your adoration. Make him. Make him your guide. Make him your leader. Make him your king walk through life. Boy, I remember my kids saying one time to one of the other kids, you know, life's tough. Get a helmet. And they just kind of laughed at it like you did. <coughs> life's tough. Get a helmet. When you think about life is tough. Even at its best, life is tough. But the scripture talks about in Ephesians chapter 6, it talks about a helmet of salvation. And you can make a reference that we've got a helmet of salvation. We've got a hope in Jesus. We've got a promise on so many things in him. My prayer today is that you know him. Not by being a good person. Not by attending church. Not by throwing X amount of dollars in the offering plate. Oh, nothing wrong with any of those things that you know him because you trusted him as your Savior. You've asked him to forgive you of your sin and believe that he's paid
paid the price for your sins and you confess them to him, and he has forgiven you. That's my prayer for you today. If anyone has any element of doubt about that, that if you had died yesterday, you should be with the Lord today. See me, I'll talk with you. I'll show you what the Bible says, how you can know. First John says, these things are written that you might know that Jesus is your Savior and your Lord today. Amen? Amen. God bless you folks. What an exciting series this has been for me. Who is Jesus? He is King of Kings, Lord of Lords. He's my hope in all things. What better song to sing at this point than 421? I have decided to follow Jesus. Let's do one, two, and four. Surgery. Let's pray for him. Amen. 
Pentecost time. Amen. Prayers from my oldest son that he may understand. Okay. Oldest son. Gosh, there's your son. Appreciate that. Okay. Who else? Susie? Uh, I'm asking prayer for my grandson's mother. Her name Cooley. She's at the old clinic now, and they're trying to find out what's going on with her. Because uh, she keeps going in the hospital, and then she gets better, and they let her out, and she stay out of the hospital, and then she's right back in there. So, Spoken then by the uplifted hand. Now, God sees your hands and hearts. Let's take a moment for silent prayer. We may uplift these before the Lord before we recite the Lord's Prayer together. Father God, we thank you for this day you've blessed us with. And then we bring these before you that have been mentioned today. Lord, for Nancy, uh, who is in the fall, Lord, we pray that uh, nothing gets broken, pray that she'll be back on her feet uh, sooner than later. And for Rich Niemeyer, Lord, who uh, has broken several things uh, in his leg, his femur, and uh, there's going to be some surgeries and uh, probably a lengthy recovery for him. We just pray that you lift him up. And Lord, this uh, precious little one, Naomi, we uplift her before you, Lord, uh, the issues she's having, whether it's related to her heart or, or something else, Lord, that you just touch this little one, meet her at the point of her needs, strengthen her, strengthen her little body, and you restore her as be your will. Pray for Perry's wife, Tammy, and for COVID that's in that home, Lord. We uh, just thank you for Perry and for his testimony. We pray for his special life. Thank you for the day of being here today, Lord. We know that he's got still got some issues he's dealing with. We pray that you Continue to walk with him and strengthen him, Lord, every step of the way. For Gordon, who's going to have surgery this week, Lord, we you know this is something he's been anticipating for uh, several months now. We pray that this would go well, and uh, Lord, just uh, help him in his recovery. As Don has a prayer for his son, we pray that you meet that need, Lord, uh, as he has asked. For Susie, as, uh, Lord, when she's requests for for Lene Cool, Lord. Is, uh, she's undergoing testing now that the doctors could find out what's wrong, strengthen and uplift this lady too, and special one, and Susie's family. And Lord, uh, Jill's asked that we uh, increase our efforts for Jeremy Murray, who she had on her list uh, some time ago, Lord, for cancer-related tests. We pray for Jeremy, Lord, uh, it's touching. Lord, healing, if that be your precious will. We know the blood work that's come back is not good, your, your healing hand be upon him. Your peace be upon him, Lord, whatever the outcome is. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God's people said together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. 
and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. God bless you today. We're going to collect our morning offering. Give as God is blessed as you're able to. And if you did not get your offering envelopes, uh, except for this coming year, there's a bunch of stuff in that. Uh, there you go, all that thing's got a binder, right, Sharp? The box there, alphabetical listing, some uh, your tax items, and all that stuff. It's all tied together in that box uh, back there in the narthex. Okay? Check on that if you haven't received any of that information yet. Questions? Go ahead. Yeah. 
downstairs, come down and have some good fellowship time and uh, satisfy your sweet tooth too, too alright? Let's close in prayer. Father God, thank you. A good crowd today. Lord, thank you for uh, our weather moderating a little bit. Lord, we hope to see a little sunshine this afternoon, if that would be your will. Guys, you direct our path. Thank you for the faithfulness of this precious, precious church. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Walk with the king, be of good cheer, Jesus said, and overcome the world. We'll see you downstairs.